How would it feel to lose 40 pounds? Even when you're over 40, you are a smart woman. You know you need to move more and eat less, but why don't you do it? Or maybe you think you are doing all the things and still not seeing the results you want. If this is the case, you are in the right place. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 lose weight for the last time. This podcast will teach you all about fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, your mindset. Plus, we have some special guests stop by to share their stories. Now on to today's show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. My name is Nicole Simonin, and I am super excited with our guest today. And our guest is a former TV health reporter, currently the host of Living Well, and I'm going to give it away with Robin Stola, (laughs) Um, the radio and online program, empowering you to live a healthier life. So welcome, Robin, to the podcast. I'm so thrilled that you are here. Thank you, Nicole. It's so great to be here. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So um, before we dive into the podcast, I wanted to let everybody know that you can find Robin on livingwellwithrobinstoloff.com. And all the show notes for everything that we talk about today will be over at shapeitupfitness.com. So you can always check out everything there. All right. So Robin, we just recently met not too long ago, um, I think via LinkedIn, right? Yes, I think it was LinkedIn. You contacted me and did a little interview for my program, which was great. Which was you know, I've done some interviews and stuff, but I have to say I was really, um, I was really caught off guard as to what, what it was, because I, in my mind had thought it was a lot longer, <laughs> which was Shorter's totally harder. fine. Shorter, Shorter is, is harder. so much harder. Isn't it? Cause you're oh going to try to get it all in, you know? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Difficult. And just kind of constraining it down to like two minutes or whatever it was. I was like, that was nerve wracking. I, I need to practice with that for sure. Well, you know what? <laughs> I, I can feel your pain because that's how I feel right now. Cause I'm never <laughs> the one interviewed. I'm oh, always right. the one interviewing. So it's, it's <laughs> awkward for me to be on this side of it. <laughs> so tell Tell listeners a little bit about your story and how you got started. Well, I guess, you know, growing up, I was very active in sports. You know, I played a million sports and always was involved in that sort of thing. And I just really loved it. And I love that feeling. When I was around, I guess, 19, I started, I got certified in teaching workout classes. We were called aerobics instructors. And I mm-hmm. seriously did wear like the leg warmers and the Jane whole bit, the whole Jane Fonda <laughs> bit. I was right there with it. And, um, and that was back then. Back then we made our own tapes. Now it's a multi-bazillion dollar business with music and everything else. But back then we would make our own music tapes. So that's how old I am. <laughs> it was one song after another and it would stop and start. I mean, it was pretty ugly, but I started teaching classes and I realized that I can do something to try to change other people's lives. I could do something to make a little bit of a difference, whether it's five people, 10 people, 12 people, it doesn't matter. It made a difference to them. So I really, I really decided that I was going to pursue that. And I finished college. I went to Villanova University. I transferred from Lock Haven, now called Lock Haven University, but it was Lock Haven State. And I transferred, which was kind of a difficult time for me, I have to say, because when you transfer colleges, people have already made their friends the first two mm-hmm. years. This was my, um, my junior year. So it was a little tough to break, break into that. And that was when Villanova got rid of their football program and everything, you know, around college is going to the football games and the tailgating and all that. So it was a weird time being, being there. So mm-hmm. I didn't feel like my real fun stuff really started until after I graduated. And that is when I got a job at NBC 40, which I couldn't believe because, well, it was actually, I worked for a radio station and then I moved, which was affiliated with them. Then I moved to NBC 40 and I couldn't believe it because I was two blocks from the beach and my whole life we had come down the shore and I would get that feeling of, we're driving down the shore and there's the, there's the saltwater air and the bay, you would see the water. And it just, I couldn't believe I was living down the shore when I got that job. It was just phenomenal. Fantastic. I just was beside myself. Now I made (laughs) $15,000, but it was $15,000 more than I made the year before because I was in college. (laughs) So, all right, I didn't care. I was just happy to be working and being near the beach and, and just, you know, just, I loved it. And I was finally 21 because when I was younger, I had actually skipped a grade, not because I was so brilliant, but because I went from Catholic to public school and I was way ahead. So when my parents moved, they put me up a grade. So I just turned 21 when I had graduated college. So, and I worked for a year in a gym 
before I ended up getting the job at NBC 40. That's where I met my husband, but that's a whole other story. But. <laughs> so what made you decide, like, what was your major in college? Communications. Oh, okay. Communications. So that was how it fit in. I just didn't that's know if you were like, in. I'm going to go to NBC. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, it was communications. I always wanted to be, you know, that reporter that moved up in the ranks and traveled around the country and you know, one of those people that you see on television. Yeah. And, you know, as I said, I met my husband when I was, what, 21, I guess. And uh, working in that gym, we worked in the gym together. And then I got the job down the shore. And I had to leave him, which mm -hmm. was really tough. I didn't know he would be my husband <laughs> at the time. Right. But I did have to leave um, for the job. because, And he encouraged me. He didn't say, oh, stay with me. And it was the best thing I could have ever done. Because I would have still lived in my parents' house. I would have been just with him, around him all the time, and not had a chance to grow and learn and make my own living and, you know, make my own way. So uh, that was probably the best thing I could have ever done. And we dated 10 years. We did the long-term program. <laughs> and wow. then we got married uh, 10 years later. He went to law school in the meantime, and I grew in my job with NBC40, which I loved. And actually, I worked in sales there. I was in the sales department. But about a couple of years into it, I said, you know, I really love this whole fitness and health. And I really think I could help to educate people and give them a little bit of knowledge. I love the short form because it's in, mm. you're out. People have a short attention span. So I went to my manager and I said, you know, I think this station could really use a health reporter. And I know just the girl for the job. <laughs> so I nominated <laughs> myself. That's and, awesome. Yeah. And I, and I made up this thing called Health Update. And the funniest thing, Nicole, with this was we did not even have a department that did graphics for us. We didn't have that back then. It was just really down and dirty. So I had found this tape. Back then, the tapes were huge. They were like giant dinosaur tapes. I mean, to look at them now, it's funny. But yeah. it was a piece of, of videotape, three-quarter inch tape, if anybody knows that. And I put it in the machine, and it said health update. There was a graphic that said health update. And I thought, that's going to be the name because that's what we have a graphic yeah. for. And it ended up being the name of a segment that I did on NBC 40 for 30 years after that. Wow. So she agreed that I could do it if I could get it sponsored, which of course I did because I was what, 23 at the time. And I, and I was a, you know, go getter type of a person. And I said, I'll get it sponsored. And that's how it all started. Started that with me on too camera. Too. And then I, and then I started to interview people because I thought that's much more interesting than just me. <laughs> they have a lot more to say. <laughs> just right. he's talking. So uh, that's how it all came about. That is so cool. That yeah. is so neat. Like, really I feel cool. like there's something to be said for, um, I don't, I don't want to use the word ignorance, but just like young bliss maybe is a better word. <laughs> well, now I have old bliss because I'm older now. Yeah. And I'm still going to jump into doing a podcast when I have no idea. How to so. Right, right. Yeah. But I think um, as an, an older person, uh, you know, when you're over 40 and you think about things that you want to jump into, you, you have all these thoughts like, oh, I don't know how to do it. I don't know. But at 21, you're just like, I've I can got this. Yeah, I can, I can figure totally this figure this out. Yeah. yeah. Make it till you make it, right? That's right. That's right. I think that's, well, that's awesome. That's how it happened. You know, and then I started doing a half an hour show after that for Shore Medical. And mm -hmm. um, it was really very interesting. I uh, co-hosted with uh, someone there and we would interview guests every week. And that was really great because it was a little more long form because the health mm -hmm. updates were so short. They were just quick little interviews. And then... Uh, Unfortunately, fast forward about 30 year, 29 years, uh, NBC 40 went off the air. And that was really devastating. It was like losing a friend. I mean, it was part of my life before I even had kids. Yeah. And um, that was in 2015. And I just was like, what am I going to do now? This is what, all I know. This is my thing, you know? Yeah. And the folks at Town Square Media, where I am now, contacted me and said, do you want to do what you do on TV, on the radio? And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a same thing. I'll try it. I don't know what I'm doing on radio, but I'll try it. I mean, how much different could it be? It turns out I had to run the board, which was a lot different. Oh, <laughs> yes, wow. yes. And yeah. I was in the studio, Nicole. Oh my gosh, that I don't even know why there is a button for this, but you could actually turn off one of the stations. Why do they even have that button? I don't know. Hmm. But guess who kept hitting it? Oh no. <laughs> Oh, yes. And, you know, the first time I would, you know, the, the guy uh, who runs the station could hear the station all, and then he would hear it go off the air as I was recording my other stuff. And he'd walk in. First, it was nice. 
Second time, he sort of had his hands on the hip. Third time, he glared at me like he wanted to choke me. And I thought, <laughs> why is that button there? I don't want to shut the kitchen off. I just was so freaked out by the board. And I'm in front of the camera. I never ran the stuff, you know. Right. Right. We're all learning how to do this all now because we're, we're doing it on our own. So, you know, you're learning it. And I give you a lot of credit. You started your own podcast in January. So God bless. That's great. Yeah, I um, I, I was talking to somebody, but um, oh, now I know who it was. But we were talking about when I first started my business, um, I had just had my son and I was like looking for an outlet to interact with adults, right? Because Sesame Street, I had enough. <laughs> And um, when I first started, I did online training, and this was back in 2006. The technology was horrible. It was very clunky, but I literally coded my own website. I don't oh. know how. Yes. I mean, I it am was. Not worthy. I am not worthy. <laughs> Oh, my God. It was the worst website ever. <laughs> <laughs> I give you but, credit, though. See, oh. you jumped into it. Yeah. I think I was looking for something to distract my mind. <laughs> no, I didn't mind you know, doing that. Um, but yeah, so I've always been like, all right, well, let's figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I, th and I think too, with the, um, even with the technology we have, but like we have Google, like mm -hmm. we can always Google whatever. I always say it's stuff. not brain surgery. We can figure it out. If, if all these other people are doing it, we can figure it out. It's just, yeah. I mean, I, I just took the seminar though for Podbean to start this podcast and I was saying to you earlier, I just, I was on the first step when they were on three steps ahead. The girl talked so fast and I was like, wait, what, what's the RSS feed and this and that. Mm. And, you know, I'm sure I can do it and figure it out, but it just was a lot more yeah. than just recording something, you know, you got to get it out there somewhere. Right. Right. Um, I, I will give out this tip. This has saved me a lot because again, back in the day in 2006, I would spend hours and not just even that, but through the um, evolution of my business, I would spend so much time trying to figure stuff out that my new rule is if I don't figure it out in five minutes, I contact somebody. <laughs> I love that. Like, That's great. Yeah. You know, I'm always Googling how to do something and I usually can kind of figure it out, but you're right. If it gets to be to a point that you can't anymore, go in the chat room, call someone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. get the help. There's experts out there. You yeah. know, why not use them? Yeah. I totally agree with that. Yeah. I get too frustrated with that. <laughs> but good for you. I mean, you made your own recipe book. I'm so impressed. That's just great. And yeah. you made me promise to start my podcast. So thank you. Because I, I probably well, would have kept putting it off because I'm <laughs> a little nervous about it. But, you know, I, I've been wanting to do it because I do these two-minute interviews for my show. They're short. And sometimes I'm like, oh, there's so much more I could ask this person and find out, you know, much more about whatever the program might be. I mean, mental health is a big issue right now. Mm. There's so many things to talk about with that. And I only have two minutes. So I yeah. thought, I can do this in a podcast. I can, I can just do it myself. I don't have to worry about, you know, getting it another show or doing it. I'll do, do it my own, my own way. Yeah, no. And I think it's a great idea. And that was one of the things we were going to talk about is one of the reasons why you came on is because you are launching your podcast. And, um, I have to say when I, I know I told you a story, but, um, for everybody out there before I started my podcast, cause I was actually thinking of doing this probably for six months before I actually jumped in and I met a man named Steve Cooper, which you should check out his, um, podcast. He interviews, um, actors and singers and stuff like that. So I'll leave that in the show notes, but he was the one that really lit the fire under my butt and was like, cause we met and I wanted to kind of get some ideas from him as to how he does the podcast. And, um, at the end he was like, so when are you doing this? This was like January, first maybe, or December, the end of December. Um, and he was like, so when are you going to launch your podcast? And I was like, oh, I don't know. And he was like, no, you're picking a day. And I was like, okay, January 7th. <laughs> yeah, good for you. And, and, you know, it kind of, I like, this is why I like having coaches in people's lives and like people to be accountable to, because if he hadn't said that to me, I probably would not have had, I think, 23 episodes of this podcast already. Um, that's from today. I don't know what this particular podcast number will be. But <laughs> yeah, so I feel like having a coach and having um, a mentor and someone to be accountable for is so important. And um, not that we can't do things on our own, but 
that, you know, I think that's a fine line. Sometimes you oh, just need somebody you to do. be like, by you the way. You promised that I would do this. So you, you were paying it forward. And I have to say, that is so great to see in another woman because that's not always the case. So many times. And we have enough obstacles. We don't have to make more obstacles for each other. We should build each other up. There's plenty of room for everyone. And there should not be you know, this t -t 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 between women, it shouldn't be like that. We should each try to help the other one get to our top of our peak, you know, try yeah. to be the best that we can be. And, you know, while we're always striving to do that, we certainly can pay it forward. Yeah. Uh, Thank it's you so important much. Thing to yeah. do. Oh, I appreciate it because I probably wouldn't be doing it. I'm doing it today. And <laughs> you are my first guest. Yay! So I don't know how that's going to go, but we'll oh, see. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I grew up in the dance world, in the ballet world, and it's very cutthroat there. Um, mm -hmm. And I would imagine in the TV world is the same sure. aspect. It um, is. But I, in the world, I know, it's like that. Yeah. yeah. But I, and I, as I'm evolving, I guess, into the mature adult that I am, <laughs> I have found that, you know, the people that are pushing other people out of the way or talking bad about other people or just, you know, not being supportive, it's so much more about them than it is about you. Mm -hmm. And the people that are not building other people up, you know, those are the people that might need some mindset work or, or just mm -hmm. some validation of their own on, on who they are as a person. Um, I agree. It's called oh. karma too. I believe. Oh in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put out good vibes and good, vi yeah, good vibes generally do come back. You know, you try to put good things out in the world and hopefully you get them back. That's a, that's a good, you know, creed to live by. I think. I a hundred percent agree. I'm mm -hmm. totally in, in karma. Like, <laughs> Yep. Um, okay, so tell me, I really want to hear about this because you were a bodybuilder. Yes. <laughs> tell me about that. I can believe. <laughs> well, I guess when I was at Lock Haven, my first college, uh, a bunch of girls were doing this and I used to work out in the gym there, but it was uh, a down and dirty. It was in a basement and it was, you know, man, it, real like hard bodybuilders down there, mm -hmm. not, not just bodybuilders, but powerlifters who lift these heavy weights and they grunt. It was mostly men and they grunt <laughs> and it's dumb and they like women, just not in their gym. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I went in with my baggy sweatpants and not trying to like attract any attention, just with my head down. And I worked really hard because I knew if I just slid it around in there, like some dumb blonde, they weren't going to accept me. And so I started to really work really hard and learn from them because as you said, you know, learn from the best, learn from the people that are doing it. And, you know, I wasn't doing a clean and jerk and all, and all the, <laughs> the crazy stuff, but they did teach me the basics of, of weight training. I learned from them. So uh, they were a bunch of girls were doing a bodybuilding show. And so I decided, why not? I I'm going to give this a try. So I had to start really dieting because, you know, I had that freshman 15 or whatever it was, you know, that little extra layer that you get chilly up there. So I needed that extra <laughs> warmth, but I had, <laughs> I had to, uh, I had to lose that. And it was hard in college had, you know, really no alcohol, no bread. Um, you know, looking back, I probably should have done it better because I really cut out a lot of fats. My hair kind of got dry. I didn't mm. do it as well as I should have. I was only 19. I didn't know as much as I know now. Yeah. Uh, so, but I got in really great shape and it was a good way for me to just feel good about accomplishing something. When you accomplish something like that, you, and almost anything in life that you accomplish, you have to give something up. You have to make some sort of sacrifice, anything, you know, children, college, anything you do, a job, there's something that you have to give up to get it. And so that's what I did. And then I didn't do it again until I was 30. <laughs> It was so hard. And then when I was 30, I did it much better, easier. And I probably looked in better shape when I turned 30. And then I did a fitness competition like about two weeks after that. So bodybuilding, you have to really be big now these days. And I really wasn't, you know, so I did fitness and my husband helped me through it, but it was hard for six months. I couldn't really eat. I would watch my family eat and I would, I would just, it was tough. I didn't have kids yet, but you know, it was all about me. I would run in the morning. I would lift weights at night. And sometimes I would just be sitting in my car like, how am I going to get to my door? I'm so sore. It was a lot, but I yeah. felt great and I was in good shape. And then I produced <laughs> my own workout video right after that. So I still 
I was able to, you know, stay in good shape to get that workout video off the ground, which I shot in Atlantic City on the beach, which is a lot of fun. Rock hard with Robin. It's on my, it's on my YouTube channel. If anybody wants it for free. I just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll get the link from you and I will put it in the show. Good workout. I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure I could do it today. <laughs> I'm going to try though. I watched it. I was like, damn, I was in good shape. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, so, uh, for anybody who has been following me on YouTube for, I don't know how many years, but, um, I have attempted to do fitness competitions over the years, not over the years. I want to say I wanted to do one at 40 and it didn't click in until I was like 44 that I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And, um, I too had ups and downs. Like, I don't think people really understand how detailed and how meticulous you need to be in order to get that look. Yes. It's, and it's not that big bulky look that a lot of women say, I'm afraid I don't want big muscles. It takes a lot to get those big muscles yeah. and they're not big muscles. It's just sculpted toned muscles. They have all different types of competitions now. It's just not the regular bodybuilding. There's fitness, right. there's, you know, different. Yeah. Ones. Yeah. But I so, think, um, I think people look at magazines or, you know, and they go, Oh, I want to look like that. But <laughs> when you really find out what you have to do in order to get that level of leanness and keep it there. And like you were saying, um, I know I've worked with different coaches, um, in particular who were in the bodybuilding realm. And there was one that like, I just felt awful. Like I lost seven pounds in one week and I was pretty lean to begin with. And it was just like, you, you couldn't like, same thing, couldn't eat bread. You couldn't eat any kind of fruit or anything like that. And, um, I, I just couldn't physically it's, it's do it. Really, it was really yeah. hard. And, and my husband's like, don't ever do it again because you were not nice to be around. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was, you know, you're hungry and you're, you know, but yeah. the feeling of doing it, knowing that I accomplished it, it's like when people run a marathon, I guess, you know, you give up so much to do that. You train so hard. You take that feeling with you throughout your entire life. You just know that you did something like that. That was hard. And that makes you stronger to do other things. I think, you know, it helps. Yeah. Well, maybe off camera, you'll have to hold me to a date because okay. I do. <laughs> I would love to see you do it. I would love, you do have to give stuff up, but it's not that bad. It's six months. Like you look at it. Yeah. No, they yeah. do it in six months. So well, I try to look at things like that. I came really close. Uh, like I was almost like, I probably needed um, a week or two to kind of tweak things a little bit. And um, I was ready to do a contest in November of last year. And there are certain federations, I know you probably know this, but there are certain poses, like the back pose. There's one federation that does the back pose that's not so suggestive looking or mm -hmm. um, it's a little less tush looking, yes. <laughs> shall we say. Don't have to um, show the as much. <laughs> yeah, and um, they canceled the show for whatever reason that they were doing. And I was like, there was none left for December. Or, you know, and I was like, well, Ugh, and you were close. That's I was very close. And then yeah. my husband whisked me away to Disney for a, a, just us trip. And it was nice. And I was like, well, this is nice because if I had had the contest, I would not have been able to enjoy sure, myself as enjoy much it. as Disney. Yeah. Yeah. I sort of so. kind of let that go. I was thinking about it, but I'm, you know, kind of past that now. I, I was thinking about it when I first, when NBC 40 first went off the air and I thought, oh, I'm a little bit too old for that now. <laughs> just, and I did it. Yeah. And then I don't think there's, I mean, I have seen, not in person, but I've seen pictures of women and there's Facebook groups that I'm in of these women who are like 70 and 80 and are in fitness competitions. It's amazing. God amazing. bless them. Good for yeah. them. I just don't know if my, my knee could hold up. I've got a knee that's giving me trouble and I just don't, yeah. you know, I don't see it right. for myself ever again, but yeah. God bless. If you do it, I'm right behind you. <laughs> I'll be there cheering you on. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's a great accomplishment, but you've already accomplished so much. So whether you do that or not, you can still feel proud of yourself. Yeah, but I have the bikini, so I have to like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, people don't realize you are standing in a bikini on a stage where people are judging you. There is, I mean, that takes a lot of guts, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's tough. That part doesn't bother me. I mean, the bikini part, yes, but like that doesn't bother me because as a ballet dancer, that was you my were, world, you, were doing you know? That, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So I think for me, it's just, um, and I feel like, 
I'm going to give myself a year, probably we'll see next year, maybe, but, um, like, I feel like I'm in a better place mentally. Like I have the mindset skills. I think that I was missing those other two years where I was like the first step you have, just as I said before, you have to be willing to give something up. And if you're not thinking that way, you won't be able to do it because you do have to give something up. I mean, it's just the way it is, but anything in life, that's good. You have to give something for it to get it. And that's just how it is. Yeah. I feel like our dreams are in our uncomfortable zone. Like we have to. (laughs) Well, absolutely. And you have to keep learning in life too. No matter how old I get, I still want to be involved in always being better, trying to learn something or do something new. I just started painting again, which I haven't painted in years, but with this being at home, I thought I got to do something more creative. So I started my watercolor. (laughs) It's not very good, but it's an outlet. (laughs) It's an outlet. And it's a good way for me to just let out my creativity and just, you know, we've kind of had so much more time. It's a really weird time in life to think about, to stop and just slow it down and think about life and to be appreciative of all that we have, because you just don't know. I mean, with everything going on right now makes you really stop and think it really does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, I have found, um, the whole COVID to be, uh, kind of a good thing, not the actual disease itself, oh, yes. obviously, of but not. like, I feel like I've been super productive in my business. <laughs> so yes. I'm not minding being home too much. <laughs> well, so. in a way I kind of feel the same because my son was home from college. So I would have never had that time with him. Mm-hmm. My daughter, I mean, that's been tough. She's 16 and I've been sitting next to, I sit next to her at the kitchen table with my computer doing my work and she's doing her work. And every time I peek over, she is not on her schoolwork. I'm like, <laughs> Get back on. She's doing something else. And you know, she thinks she's off. I'm like, no, you're not off. You would be in school, actual school right now if we had it. Right. So that's been difficult. And she has ADHD. And, you know, it's very tough for her to focus, yeah. but um, you know, we're working that out. But I had a Google algebra two-step algebra equations and i didn't like algebra the first time around so (laughs) this isn't fun at all for me (laughs) yeah um my i think it was so my math skills are really rudimentary like i am a calculator baby to probably (laughs) scarily all you have to know is how to figure out the chip and how to figure out what's on sale and they have apps for that so (laughs) for that that's all you need <laughs> yeah so I think when the kids were like second grade I, I just looked at my husband I was like math is all you <laughs> yes yes yeah well believe me my husband's been going into his office even though nobody's there but he still mm-hmm. goes in every day I think it's really maybe to get away from all of us I don't know <laughs> but mine does the same thing he's really happy when he's going in I don't know you'd be the judge but he's wearing like his jeans and casual clothes and a t-shirt. He's like, I don't know if I could ever go back. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's going to be really hard once things start to open up again and we have to wear real clothes. I haven't worn pants with a zipper (laughs) in two months. (laughs) It's great. I wear the same seven pairs of yoga pants. (laughs) Yep, me too. Are you there with me? I got them on right now. I am. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. (laughs) Um, okay. So I know we touched on the podcast. Do you want to tell everyone when it's coming out or do you want it to be a surprise? I'm going to try to launch the first one early June. Let's just say early June. Cause I want to have a few, as we say in the can before I actually launch it, because you know how things happen. You'll have a guest lined up then something will come up or you can't record it or someone doesn't feel well, whatever it is. Yeah. So I want to try to have a few already done. And I was, I was thinking of starting with just audio and then maybe going into video just because it's less to worry about. Right. One less thing, don't have to right. do my hair and makeup and then I yeah. can just focus on the audio <laughs> right. part. So we'll see, uh, you know, it will be a work in progress just like everything else that I've done in my life. But I just, I'm excited because there are so many people that I know in town after how many years doing this that I really yeah. would love to delve into things a little bit more with them and bring people more information because that's what I feel like my, that's my mission is to try to teach other people or help other people educate them so they can make good choices in their lives and live a better life. Cause we only go around once mm-hmm. So why not make it the best it can be. And right. why look back on things and say, Oh, I wish I had done it differently when you have that choice right now to, to make it different. So I guess that's what I feel like God put me here to do. That's what yeah. I try to do. I work yeah, out with and my kids and we, we, we try to eat healthy. We try to pass that along. 
Yeah. And, and you've been helping out people for a while mm, now. Many <laughs> years. Many, many years. <laughs> aging myself here. Over 30, over 30 years I've been doing this. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I mean, think about that. How many people's lives have you touched just, I you know hope, what I mean? I hope. Sometimes I hear it from people or I really like what you said. And one time a lady came up to me, I always say, get your uh, physicals or your um, mm. different tests around your birthday. So you don't forget as try as we might to forget a birthday. We can <laughs> always remember that we should be doing our checkups or whatever, our screenings. And she said she got a screening around a birthday for breast cancer. And she was she found to have breast cancer mm. early stages. But she said to me, thank you so much for giving me that advice. I might not have gotten it done yeah. and who knows what would have happened. And she was all good and fine, but she did say that. And that made me feel oh, that's awesome. really great. It was yeah. awesome. It was awesome. awesome. And that's kind of what it's all about. But sometimes you don't even know who you're affecting or not. Right. Right. I'm sure there's been more than one person. <laughs> I, <hope laughs> For so. sure. I really, really do. That's the whole, that's the plan, you know, and even if it's just a, you know, this corner of the world and only, you know, however many people, it still makes a difference to them. And that's yeah. what I feel. Yeah. If you make a difference for someone, you've done something good. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. All right. So Robin, tell everyone how they can reach you. Like, okay. Website. So yes, my website is a good way to reach me living well with Robin Stoloff .com. Uh, I have a YouTube channel connected to that. Um, if you want to email me, it's uh, livingwellwithrobin at gmail.com. That's another one, easy to do. And then, of course, I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, um, Twitter, <laughs> Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> Facebook, it's Health Update because I just kept the Health Update name. I use right. Living Well now, but just kept that Health Update with Robin Stoloff. Lots of people reach me there. So if anybody would want to be on the show or just have some great words of wisdom to share. I always love hearing from people. It's, it's wonderful. And you know, we can't always know what's going on unless people right. reach us. So that's could be great if people reached out. Right. Right. And, um, if you do what I did and reached out to you and <laughs> you did, and I responded and look, we, yeah, I know well, we may never see each other in person, Nicole, <laughs> at this point. Who knows? Right. Uh, Hopefully we'll see each other at some point somewhere. I hope so. I, hope so. I mean, uh, it's been a long journey so far and it hasn't ended yet. So let's just hope yeah. people stay safe and healthy. Yeah. We can get through this. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter made a comment. She's 13 and she said today something like, I'm going to be 83 when we're allowed out of the house. And I was like, well, I hope not. <laughs> I know. My <laughs> daughter said this. She goes, what are we doing today? And I'm like, we're living... <laughs> This in the same movie every day. It's Groundhog, Groundhog Day. day. Yeah. I mean, what are we doing today? <laughs> same thing we did yesterday. <laughs> you know, it's it's that's been tough for the kids, I think. But you know, I tell her there are so many people that have it way worse off, and you just have to say thank you for what you have. I try to yeah. look at the glass half full instead mm -hmm. of half empty, and there are so that's what I said. It made me appreciate so much. I mean, we we've got food on our table. We have a roof over our head. God bless so far. Everyone has been healthy. And I just look at that. And I tell her that I said, just say a prayer. Thank God for all that you have. Be thankful. And you know, sometimes we're moving so fast. We don't always have a chance to do that. Yeah. So uh, that's something that I try to do every single day. I pray over my kids heads and put my hand on their heads and they're sleeping. <laughs> My, well, my son locks his door now, but I put my hand on the door. <laughs> He's 19, so he doesn't want mom in there. Right. But um, my daughter, I say a prayer over their heads, you know, for them to be safe and healthy and have a wonderful, happy, long life. And that's yeah. really the most we can hope for, especially as parents. That's probably the biggest thing in our world right now is for them to be safe and healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think gratitude is a huge, huge thing that we, you know, especially um, as Americans, like I feel like um, a lot of times we feel entitled to things like we feel entitled that our internet works perfectly. We oh, feel entitled that our phone, absolutely. you know, that kind of thing. So um, paper on the shelves, whoever thought, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, whoever thought we'd have to actually, you know, ration meat or yeah. worry about buying toilet paper. I mean, yeah. we just take it all for granted. We are, you know, blessed with so many riches in this country that we don't they don't even stop to realize it so yeah. it, if anything it's made us think about all of that you know all the good things that we have in our lives yeah. good yeah. something good out of covid right <laughs> yeah something good i mean there's so many you know terrible stories and sometimes i have to talk 
shut it all off because it just makes me cry, especially when I hear about kids. I can't take it. It's just yeah. too much, you know? Yeah. So we just have to like, you know, grit our teeth and just get through each day, one day at a time, as many yeah. support groups always say, one yeah. day at a time. You can't project into the future because we just don't know right now. Right, right. But I think too, the other fact is, is that, um, that is every day, whether there's COVID happening or not. Like the fact that we wake up and open our eyes and get to live another day, I I feel like that's something that we don't always hone in on. When you're moving at a speed, like most of us, it's very hard to slow down and and think of that. So that's why it's really good to just stop. I mean, that's really, whether you're religious or not, that's where prayer and all of that comes in because you do have to just slow it down. And I started, um, keeping a journal. I, I've got this app called day one that you can actually just talk into it. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it types for you and you can connect pictures to it. And I take pictures yeah. of the TV sometimes. And I just took pictures of where I work because it says mask required. And I thought, wait till people see these pictures someday. They won't believe that this is an office where you have to wear a mask. It's mm. going to be, it's historical really. Yeah. And people will want to know our feelings and how we thought. And I will want to try to look back oh, and yeah. remember what was going on during this time. So, right. and it's very yeah. cathartic. I used to keep a journal in college. It really is a great way to just let it all out, you know, mm-hmm. if, if you need to, or just get out and walk or do something that, you know, the other day I was just, it, I had enough, just everything was bugging me. And I went out and walked and faster than I've ever walked in my life. And it just, <laughs> I got home and I felt great. And that's one thing I want to relate to people is just, you got to keep moving, keep moving right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big journal, journal, journal roll. Is that the right word? Journaler, that's, I write. That's yeah. <laughs> I write in books. <laughs> no, you like to write. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. A big journal, whatever. A uh, diary writer. <laughs> there you go. Easier. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because like in college, I, I did that a lot and um, I'm kind of scared to look back at those books because I'm not sure what's in them anymore. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and um, the things that seem so important back then, yeah, you know, you don't yeah. even remember who the people are anymore, no. which is really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Know? So yeah. it just gives you a bird's eye view of your life and don't take it all so seriously because right. it's not. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So let's dive into the speed round. Ah. Ready? Ah, okay. <laughs> Okay, so question number one, do you prefer coffee or tea? Oh, God, I have my coffee. Several cups in the morning. I've been trying not to drink it after maybe 2 p.m., but then at (laughs) night, I do drink uh, decaf green tea because that's just so good for you in so many ways. So I do have my little settled down cup of decaf green tea, which is great. Nice. Um, I'm definitely a coffee drinker, for sure. And um, I used to drink, and I probably should start again, but it was um, chai, decaf chai tea oh, yeah. at night. That's mm, good. That's good. Yeah. That's very good. All right. So what is your favorite book? Probably. I'm not a big fiction reader. I did just read 1984, which kind of freaked me out because he was such a visionary, George Orwell. He could see into the future. He talked about a screen in your home that could see you. And, he, and isn't that what we have? Here we are. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. Watch over you or that talk to you. I was like, oh my gosh, that was 1950 he wrote that. So that kind of was a little freaky and how the government ran everything was just weird. Uh, but I did read uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective Families by Stephen Covey. Okay. I really like that because I always like books that can make me do better and do things better and maybe how to talk to your kids in another way rather than the finger wagging, you know? Right. So that was very very good book. Very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm a big, we're d- big Disney people. And in the sci-fi um, restaurant, if you're familiar with Disney, they have the vid- uh, the movies, the old movies when you're eating, it's like an old drive-in. And one of the videos or the clips that they show is the um, talking on the phone and seeing the person. And I mean, these are all you know, movies they shot back in, I guess the twenties or thirties. I don't know exactly when, but yeah, it's interesting. It was interesting. like big time, high tech stuff. Yeah, right? Like George Jetson stuff that's yes, now happening. I'm <laughs> for the jet packs. I want to fly around in a jet. Yeah. Pack. I want to totally awesome. be there for that. Cause <laughs> that is my, I would love that. <laughs> Absolutely. You could fly over the traffic, but then there, I guess there'd be traffic up there. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Not work. laughs> What is your favorite activity you like that keeps you physically fit and mentally fit? Uh, I guess, you know, I haven't been teaching my workout classes, but I've been teaching workout classes, I said, since I was 19. So many, many years. So that's probably one of my favorites because I get to design it, do it myself. And 
encourage other people because when I do it, I get a chance to give them little tips of motivation. Mm -hmm. But we have a full gym in our basement and I haven't used it. I've used it more than I've ever used it before because I'm not playing tennis. I'm not doing other things. So right now I would say it would be working out with my family. The four of us are down there, my 19 year old son, my husband, me and my daughter all together. And it's just great. I mean, I sometimes take pictures of it because I think this is such a great thing that we're doing and teaching our kids how to be fit and how to, you know, my son is now 200 and some pounds. My, my husband always says it can't not work. <laughs> it's true. It's a, not really the correct English, but you get the point. <laughs> right, right. He's saying it's got to work because yeah. if you do it, it will work. And he's, he's like put on so much muscle since he's been home since January, my son. And uh, my daughter's getting in better shape. And I've even done a little bit more because I've been lifting almost every single day. So I would say my base is lifting weights. And I think that's so important for women because so many women don't do that. Yeah. And it, that's why I like some of the classes with the weights because they're learning to lift. And that's very important for just our bone density, our muscle tone, everything. Mm -hmm. As we get older, we lose all of that. So that's probably one of my favorites is, and my yeah. class is a weight training class. I use weights in my class, nice. which is great. Now, are you fun. still teaching classes? I mean, other than I know now, yes. now but. Oh. Yes, I was teaching um, two classes a week. I was teaching spin and I mm -hmm. was doing, um, just as I said, like a body sculpting class called mashup, which is a little bit of everything, you know, some cardio, some stuff, but I don't jump. That was my whole mm. claim to fame. I just don't see the need for it. Putting that extra pressure on your joints, you can get yeah. your heart rate up. Your heart doesn't know the difference. You right. need so many things to get your heart rate up without having to do all that impact on your body. You know, when I was younger, I didn't really care, but now I feel yeah. it more and, you know, it builds up. Maybe if I had done some of those things, my knee wouldn't be as sore as it is today. So I, you know, you live and learn. So you yeah. try to, you try to do the safest thing, but the most effective thing when you're working out. Well, when all this is done, cause I know we're not too far from each other. I'll have to come down and take one of your classes. I would <laughs> love you to do that. That would be great. It's not going to be spin it. though. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be weight training. <laughs> That's fine. Whatever works for you. Spin is not as hard as you think though. Cause you can just kind of sit on the bike and just kind of paddle. Nobody knows, you know, it's really not as bad. I've been that doing that bike seat. It's the bike seat you got to get used to. You kind of walk funny a couple of days. To get <laughs> right. that. But I've been doing Peloton. Peloton had a free three months. So I, I have, okay. don't have the Peloton bike, but I've been doing that. And they have all these different workouts, which has been really great. Cool. So I have like a little kind of yoga set up. And after we work out, my daughter and I, daughter and I do like their 10 minute yoga or 15 minute yoga together, meditation and nice. always done with namaste. And mm -hmm. It's just nice. Yeah, I love awesome. that. That's it's great awesome to do with families that. involved. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. The, the most, probably the, one, the most important thing we could teach our kids is take care of themselves, yeah, their bodies sure. and their health and their minds. Yes. Yes. Uh, I a hundred percent agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is your favorite movie? Favorite movie. Wow. There's a couple different ones. I guess um, I just saw Silver Linings Playbook, which I thought was great. That had to do with mental health, overcoming that. But I guess if I'm flipping through the channels, the ones that I would stop on would be uh, always stop on Jaws especially the scene with Quint where he's ex explaining, you know, going into the water with the sharks and just love that. It's just such good acting and a few good men where you can't handle the truth. That scene is just mm -hmm. awesome. But probably one of my favorite funny movies is the Nutty Professor where uh -huh. Eddie Murphy plays all the different characters. That just makes me laugh. That cracks me up. So they're the movies that I would, if I'm flicking around and I see them, even though I've seen them 20 times before, I'll watch them again. You're watching them again. <laughs> yeah. What is your favorite inspirational quote? That which does not kill you makes you stronger. I mm. learned that. I took a philosophy class. That's by the philosopher Nietzsche. I learned that mm. in school when I was in college. And I just thought, that's such a great quote. Because the things that we have to go through kind of toughen us up and make us stronger, especially right now with yeah. this whole COVID thing. In fact, I started doing, at the end of my show on Sunday mornings, I started doing a quote of the week. And then I put that up on all my social media and they're always about something like that, overcoming right now. Yeah. And just being able to live through this difficult time and be able to kind of talk about it later that we've yeah. survived it, you know? And yeah. I think um, that's probably a great quote to live by. Yeah, I think that to circle back to what we were talking about before, I mean, that's getting you out of your comfort zone. I mean, if it really, if it's not killing you, <laughs> yeah, you can go for it for sure. Right, right. And yeah. it's, you know, obviously it means it's pretty tough, but that's generally people who've gone through things are, are the strongest and toughest and, and the best people because they've learned to live through adversity. Yeah, yeah, I agree.
Mm -hmm. So let's wrap up. And if you could give us three health tips that people can use today. Okay. Well, kind of like we talked about today, I guess uh, one of the biggest things is just to be thankful. Be thankful every day for all of your blessings. Try to look at the glass half full, not half empty. And mm -hmm. don't look at what you don't have, but be appreciative of what you do have. Um, take a minute to meditate, pray, whatever you want to call it, because our, our mental health is just as important as our physical health. Mm -hmm. So that's, to me, that's all wrapped into one. Gratitude, praying, prayer, meditation is all one thing. Another thing is to move your body every day. We were not meant to sit on the couch and eat potato chips. We were meant to move. So whatever way you have to do it, whether it's you know, doing a few push-ups, a few sit-ups, or taking a walk, whatever, where, you know, wherever you are, start from there and, and move every day. Try to at least 20, 30 minutes of some sort of movement. And if you do more than that, even better. But it just feels so good to do that and to keep your body moving. And I guess the final thing I would say is enjoy your life. Have fun. Do things that you like. Be around friends. It's a difficult time right now, but connect with others and just have some laughs. I'm going on Zoom every Tuesday night with a bunch of friends right now, and it was so weird at first. We mm -hmm. didn't know how to do it, and now we're all just laughing and talking, and you know, am I on, am I not on? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and now it's become really fun, and it's great. We need that connection as human beings, and we're, we're missing that right now. So do yeah. things that are fun, be around people that you like, don't waste time with people that you don't, mm -hmm. you know, enjoy your life, because we just don't know what tomorrow holds for us. Awesome. Well, I think those are excellent tips. I have thoroughly enjoyed my conversation with you, you for too, sure. Nicole, you're the best. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming on. And everybody, that is a wrap for today. And I will thank talk you. to you next week. Thanks. It was great. Hey, if you're loving this podcast, I want to hear from you. Head over to the Apple Podcast and scroll all the way down at the bottom of the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Please write a review. I can't wait to see what you write. Once you're done with your review, head over to shapeitupfitness.com and find out how you can get started on losing the weight for the last time.